name is Andrew King, and I play guitar in the Crystal Antlers. My name is Johnny Bell, and I play bass and sing in Crystal Antlers. Nice. Where, where did the name come from? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where the name came from. Carol and Kevin and I, the drummer and the guitar player, and I, we uh, had a high school music class together, and uh, our teacher was being under investigate, uh, being investigated for um, child molesting. So we had no teacher for most of the year, and we just started playing together like in this music class, kind of just had free reign on all the band instruments. Victor was a friend of ours that we'd known from around town, and um, his dad was a mariachi, so we figured he would be able to pick up any instrument, and we gave him, and so he started playing organ. Uh, Damien went on tour with us and just kind of started playing. He just jumped right up on stage and started playing. And about a year ago, Errol left the band and moved to Thailand, and Andrew joined the band. Recently, Errol came back, and now he plays with us also. So now we have six people. <laughs> What's it like touring with the, uh, the vegetable oil powered van? Pretty greasy and dirty. It gets all over the clothes and... Uh, equipment, too. It gets all over the equipment. and We just have accidents now and then. And it doesn't really come off, so it just continues to get all over the equipment. It just spreads. Yeah. Our, equi our equipment is super greasy. And then where do you guys get your grease? It's a secret. Really? We steal it from restaurants. Or we ask. I mean, we ask. We always ask first. I know, I know probably you guys have been asked a ton, a ton about Touch and Go Records and how that's how that's kind of you know it's it's a sad situation about what happened to them because I really liked a lot of what's on their label and I was really excited to see you guys be a part of them. Um, what do you think that says about the music industry in general? I mean, you guys did DIY for so long and you, you guys were very successful at it. Um, do you feel like you know record labels are kind of a, going the way of the dinosaur a little bit and bands need to be more self-sufficient? Uh, well, it certainly would seem that way. Uh, Touch and Go was around for 30 years. And they were able to survive without, you know, being completely independent, and you know, basically because of the way that the industry has changed and the fact that just labels aren't selling as many records as they used to, you know, basically put Touch and Go out out of business. And you know, if it could happen to them, it can happen to a lot of labels, and it has been. And you know, with, we were able to do a lot of our distribution by ourselves um, and sell a lot of records on our own And before we were working with Touch and Go. So we're kind of fortunate that we're, we have, like, you know, the know-how to, to do some of that stuff. And also, you know, we benefited greatly, and we still are from working with them and the experience with working with them. But... Um, it seems definitely for the future that uh, a lot of bands are going to need to start taking things in their own hands. You know, our record just came out on, on Touch and Go, so, um, you know, they'll be working that, you know, for a while, and um, and we'll still be dealing with them, to, you know, to a certain extent. But um, as far as, like, for future releases and everything, like, we haven't really figured out um, any other labels, you know, like tentatively we'll just release everything on our own. As a five or six piece now, uh, what, what's your guys' songwriting and recording process like? Uh, well, it's, it's changing a bit. Now it's something that's much more collective and since we're kind of trying to work on it in the van a lot, um, I have a feeling like this record is going to be like even 
be more, more collective. So, so you guys are actually writing while you're in the van, like in between shows. We're trying to. We're trying to. And we have like uh, a, a boom box and like a thing to transfer um, uh, like from the four track to uh, MP3s and, and that kind of thing. So we can kind of put it together and start, you know, arranging things the best we can with very, you know, limited resources. Also, I've read somewhere that you guys are maybe scoring um, an upcoming film. It's kind of a tour documentary slash horror film, and it was filmed on our first European tour. And it's also got some scripted parts to it. Like he said, there was a script, you know, a loose script, and then we like improvised scenes along the way with different actors, well, people that we kind of turned into <coughs> actors, and we would write scenes for them if they seemed interesting. We're, we're going to do a tour where they've screened the film, and then we play a live score to it Very cool. so sometime it's... next year. It won't be the next album, but it will be coming out sometime around, around the same time as the next album. I have noticed a lot of bands getting their music out there in other ways, like uh, through popular TV shows or video games or whatnot. Uh, is that is that something that uh, Crystal Antlers is planning on doing at all, or have you guys done that already? It was used for like an advertisement for like a, the Red Campaign, which is like a AIDS awareness thing. If if there was if there was one place like one video game or one TV show or one movie or that that you guys could have one of your songs be on, what would it be? Well, if there was one, Saved by the Bell reunion, maybe. <laughs> I'm